Hi folks, thanks for joining me for um, this live tying session. Sorry about that little blip with the sound at the start, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through the tying of the original candy floss booby and also how I fish it. Now the candy floss booby, you all know the fly very well now and it's morphed over the years, but um, it's been around for a long, long time. And uh, I'm going to initially show you how I tied the original and I'm going to explain as we go along how I fish it. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to stick a hook in the vise. And the hook is a Hanak H250 barbless hook. Now, originally when I tied this fly, obviously we were all fishing barbed hooks back in the day, and uh, the hook I used was a Kamazan B160. But um, now that I've gone over to barbless, I prefer the, the 250. So I'm just going to put on my massive goggles before I make a start. Now that we've got sound. Hi Chris, the Chris is sorry, the both Chris's are in the house. Ian, nice to see you. And the thread I'm going to be using is the uni thread, it's at 6 aught, and as you can see it's a bright orange, they call it fire orange. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get a little bit of wax onto my thread. Then I can catch in behind the eye and just get a bed of thread down the shank. Remove my waist end. Now originally, the um, the, mate the materials we had 20 odd years ago is not like the massive selection of materials you have now. So what we used to do was mix marabou to get a certain shade. So I'm going to use the uh, Comp Candy Pink Lemonade and the Comp Candy UV Luna. And what I would do was I would take a pinch from each stalk of marabou, just a thumb's worth. About the same amount from the white. And then I would blend them together. Just in my fingers, rolling it round till I get a nice blend. Give it a little twist. Then just off camera, I'm just um, snipping my waist into a a little tub that I can dispose of later and then I can capture that right the way up the length of the hook and I want it all the way up the length of the hook because I want to keep my body nice and even and that looks not too bad I'll just come in and pull away my tail fibres now, before I go on, I just damp my fingers down just to get that marabou tail nice and damp and out of the way. So, the next thing then, uh, we didn't have things like uh, Mirage and stuff. What we had was Pearl Lurex and uh, again, I've, I've got some Vivas E01, sorry, P01 and it's just a Pearl Lurex. And I've got a bit here that I've been working with. Now the thread was quite important for this pattern, to my mind, because when you put the lurex over the top of it, you got that orange glow. So that's why I'm taking a bit of time just to get good thread coverage of the body. And you'll notice that at the front of the hook here, there's um, I've left quite a lot of room. Now of course, again, Back in the good old days, we just didn't have things like UV resin. And uh, what I was finding, so I was tying this fly up. Oh, that's come out. I'll just lash that back in. It's all going wrong. We didn't have things like UV resins. And um, what I was finding when I was going fishing with this, after four or five fish, 
um, their teeth would rip into the uh, pearl lurex and the fly would be destroyed after four or five fish. So to, to stop that, I started using super glue. And that just made the fly last a lot longer. So we'd then bring the lurex up, trying to keep touching turns. And uh, I don't know if you can hear in the background, it's just all kicked off. It's been silent here all day. And um, as soon as I've started doing this, first I've got no sound, and now I've got too much sound. So somebody's at the door. I can hear the dog pattering away on the, the wooden floor. <laughs> I hope it's not too distracting. So I've just brought up the uh, pearl lurex. And then I can snip away that. And because this is quite a, a thick thing, you can immediately start tying in behind it because it's dry, you know, it's it's underneath the pearl lurex. So the wing then. I've got uh, the lunar white again and the uh, pink lemonade. I'm going to take a thumb's worth of the pink lemonade. And I'm going to lay that up to the white. And I'm just going to pull it all round together. Okay, just bear with me, Nigel. I can see you've got a question there, but I'm just trying to sort this wing out, and then I'll be right with you. So I'm going to damp down the ends. Just trim away any excess, and then I'm going to capture that in. few turns, then again with my thumb and forefinger clamped down on the marabou, I can pinch the end away. Now these flies are all comp legal, uh, the size 8, 250 fits in the competition vice exactly, and uh, I'll obviously check the length of my fly before it goes in a comp box. Right Nige, what are you saying? What's the weather like down there? It's been raining in the north east links all day. We have had that much. Do you know where to get hold of several hundred cubits of gopher wood? <laughs> You're building a boat there, Nigel. Um, no, we had all our rain yesterday, which I uh, got caught out in. Uh, today is be it's, it's very sunny here in the southeast of England. So next then, what I want to do is um, add my booby eyes. Now, for those that follow the, the channel, you know that this little tic-tac I have a video for that and I'm going to post uh, in the, the recorded version there'll be a little link to how I get to this point with the booby eyes and it's just a little tic tac and that video explains clearly how I do that so basically what I'm going to do next then uh, is loop my thread around it's probably just off camera there but where I put the needle into the, the booby eye when I'm forming it I use that as my centre guide and then what I can do is wrap it up and when I get to the top of the shank I'm going to hold it into place and I do five turns each way then pop my fingers round And then I can come to the front of the shank, a couple of turns, then with my whip finish tool, I can finish the fly off. Now you can add a little bit of head cement, which will um, invariably make it last a lot longer but what I do is just some super glue I don't use the brush I get a needle just take a little bit of super glue onto the needle split the eyes and just put a dab of super glue through then I'll turn it upside down 
and again just on my thread wraps there underneath I'm just going to get a bit of super glue onto that as well and that was my friends how the original candy floss was tied and uh, it's it's still one I use I've got several with different size eyes and before we move along I just want to explain a bit about the cylinders and the eyes that we get so basically if you cut your own and I do I use the Gunville foam cutters to cut my booby eyes and they come in let's see if I can get this in focus so they come in all different diameters and you know it depends on what effect you're trying to create with the fly and the way I fish the candy floss mostly especially early season and this is an absolutely lethal tactic so basically I'll set up my rod I fish with seven weight rods and I'll fish it on a sinking line such as a DI7, a DI5, DI3 depending on what sort of depth the fish are sitting at and uh, I will connect the single fly to the thinnest leader I think I can get away with let me just take that off for a sec so if, if I'm at Rutland for example I tend to not go much less than eight pound fluorocarbon just let's see put that on the, the big screen so eight pound fluorocarbon uh, last year at Rutland I found myself using the, the the ten pound fluorocarbon now strength is for depending on what condition the fish are in and if the fish are in real good condition then basically you've got to up your tippet strength but that's a compromise in my opinion when I'm at uh, places where I know the fish aren't going to hit too hard and um, the, the water clarity is good I'll go down to five pound tippet and uh, that works a treat as well what you've got to remember because you're only fishing a single fly the strength of that tippet is much better than as if you're fishing a team of flies the other reason that I often switch to all companglers will have a default setting and what do I mean by default setting well basically when it's you know generally most companglers will be out practicing and when they go out on the match day they'll have a plan in their head and when that plan goes peak tong as it invariably does more often than not they'll have a default setting and that you know some people will say their default setting is a di7 with two blobs or a di3 with a team of cormorants well my default setting is a di7 and a single booby and it's uh, it's got me out of trouble more than once shall we say so there, there's lots of different ways of fishing it in the summer months you can rip it across the top and you get the big bow waves chasing it and um it's just phenomenal fun watching the fish come from all angles to try and intercept the fly and uh, i first seen this at Bew water where peter thomason i was in a boat with him was doing it on a floating line but and he was pulling that quick that the fish couldn't get a hold of the booby you could see them coming slashing at it but the very often he would get you know for every 10 bits of interest he got he, he hooked a fish and i thought well i'm that's not really a great um, proportion you know takes to fish in the boat so what I did was started to fish it on a fast glass which might seem that you're going to be fishing it too deep but what you did was you cast the fast glass out as far as you could and initially you would pull really pull hard as, as fast as you could and you would see the booby making a huge wake and or very often you would bring fish into the fly and they would follow your fly and uh, what would happen is eventually because you're on a fast glass line the fly would dip under and then once you've lost sight of that V that the fly was making you would just break into a figure of eight retrieve and very often fish would just come and smash it and the takes were great and it was really a productive way of fishing in the summer now in the winter months you're obviously dealing with much more difficult conditions and um, the wind can be a real factor and comp anglers they get no choice what day they go out you know the date of the comp set and regardless of what the weather's doing you're getting in that boat and going to do your best and what i always say to people if it's blown a hoolie 
you're much better off trying to fish one fly effectively than spending half your day unknitting a team of four or three flies in the boat. But um, yeah, so that's a couple of bits and bobs. I'm going to show you another fly now and then I'll talk about some other uh, different tactics with the booby. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the Hanak H250 barbless hook. I'll just pop that in the vise. And let's just see if there's any questions. Stevie, how are you, mate? I remember fishing with Jock Kettles at Chew many years ago. He was using the candy that day. It was possibly the first time I seen it. I gave Jock Kettles that fly, Stevie, at Buell one, one Sunday when we were fishing. Um, we had a grand day. In fact, it just um, it's prompted me to, to remember. It's it's a bit of a war story, I suppose. I don't want to swing the light. But we, me and Jock used to fish at Buell every, um, every Sunday. And we'd gone along this day and the lodge said, Oh, look, they've got an England qualifier on. Can you please stay away from the, the main fleet of boats? And... And we said, oh, well, yeah, no problem at all. Where are they? And they said, they're all, they're all at Chingley Wood, all the fish are at Chingley Wood, but if you could just sort of give them plenty of space. And I said to Jock, I says, come on, we'll go up to Hook Strait and we'll, uh, we'll have a wee fish. And that's when I first gave Jock the candy floss because I was showing him that technique that I've just described there and he couldn't believe it. And, and he said, oh, give me one of them. And we had an absolute ball. Anyway, long story short, the Kit Kat Cup was born that day, uh, but... When we got back into the lodge, um, Jeff Latter was coming off. He'd done his England qualifier, and uh, I'd said, "Oh, how, how's everyone got on?" He said, "Well, I think the best bag six. And I was like, "That get away six. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, six. I think it's a good a good bag today." And me and Jock had had sixteen fish each doing this uh, stripping the booby across the top, and we'd had a ball, and we'd stayed away from all the sort of hotspot areas where the uh, the eliminator was going on. So that's that's how devastating this fly is. Um, of course, everybody and their dogs got it nowadays, so I'm not so sure it's, uh, it's as effective as it once was. Anyway, let's get on to the next pattern. And what I'm going to do is a little, uh, a black pattern this time, a Viva, a Viva booby. It's not a Viva, but it's, uh, it's what I'm going to call it. So I'll get the goggles back on. And what I'm using is the E15. It's at 80, and it's a nice bright lime green thread. It looks a lot brighter on the camera, actually, but it is um, it is very green. So I'm going to just run a little bit of wax through my thread. and catch in behind the eye, run a bed of thread down the shank. I'll just trim up my waist. And for the tail of this fly, I'm gonna be using some Glowbrite. This is the number 12. And again, it's, it's a bit darker shade of green than, than the thread I'm using. And what I've done is I've, I've just broken off a little strand and what I'm going to do is fold it, fold it again and fold it once more. So I get not a huge tail, but a nice meaty tail. Now before I tie it in, I'm going to get rid of these loops. And once again, I'm going to tie it the entire length of the body. There we go, and I want it to protrude past the bend of the hook about a centimetre. Then I can just come in with my fingers and fluff that up. That looks pretty good. Hi, black fur. Um. Sorry, the question for, for everyone's benefit that's um, not seeing the live stream is um, 
on hook finish and colour? Does it matter? Is there a reason you use one hook over the other? I mostly use black nickel. Well, it, the reason I use the uh, the 250 on this, and you'll notice a lot of the flies are tied of a, a, an upturned hook point, but with the boobies, I tend to fish them very much in contact. So I don't need that upturned hook point. This is a heavy wire hook, so when the fish hit, are hitting hard, I don't need to worry about being straightened out. And the other thing I really like is the gape. It's got a huge gape. If anything comes near this, it's getting hooked. Okay, so uh, going on from there, the body I'm going to be using for this is the uh, Mirage Opal Tinsel. And I have a little bit that I've been working with here. I'm going to try and catch that in without uh, it coming out this time. And then what I want to do is just make sure that body is either very even or I've got a slight taper coming towards the eye of the hook. Then I can come up. Just keep coming until you meet your thread and then you can trap that in. Three turns that way and I'll just get a couple of turns in front and then I can take away my excess. Now, the last fly I tied, I used super glue under the body to protect it, yeah? This time round though, I'm going to just add a very slight layer of resin. This just protects that body. As I say, once the fish start chomping on these, you don't want it coming undone. Okay, that'll do the job. Next then, I'm going to come in with some uh, black marabou. This is the Black Jack Marabou from uh, Comp Candy. Really are lovely plumes. Plenty of usable feather on it. And again, I'm going to use my thumb as a guide. I'm going to take it from the nail to the knuckle. And just pull that off. Just snipped uh, my waste off into my uh, rubbish and I'm going to catch that in at the front. Again, you don't need to worry overly about the size of the head because we're going to be putting a huge pair of booby eyes on it. Thumb and forefinger clamp down and you can pull your excess marabou away. I'm sorry if I'm not keeping up with the questions guys, but it's difficult to tie and talk and, and uh, read as well, and reading's never been my strong point. <laughs> okay, now one more thing for the, for the wing of this. I'm going to be using some of this stuff if I can find it. It's uh, Crystal Flash, it's extra fine. Now, I know a lot of people put uh, crystal flash in their wings, but I always find that um, it's it's just too stiff. And this stuff, it's really thin, and I prefer to use that. I only want two bits either side, so I'm going to catch it on, like so, with a couple of loose turns. And then just going to manipulate it till I've, I've got it where I want it. And that looks not bad. 
can come in with my snips and take away my excess. Now I'll put that to the side for the side to tie some more, but I doubt it because after this I'm going to be watching the rugby with beer. <laughs> Just wet your thumb and forefinger, slick it all back, get out of the way, and then on this occasion I'm going to put on some black eyes. I'll just open up my thread. I'll try and do it further up so you can see. So you can see where I've stuck my needle in there and you see that mark. That's what I'm aiming for when I bring my thread around like so. And that always ensures that my eyes are nice and even. And then I can come in, wrap up. And once I've rolled it onto the top of the shank, Five turns one way. Five turns the other way. Then a few turns just in behind the eye. Then I can grab my quick finish tool. And finish the fly off. Again, I think it's important to make sure that, see, if I, if I don't do anything with this now, if I put a little spot of varnish on my thread, you can see that them eyes are going to move and as they get hit by fish, they're, uh, they're soon going to become dislodged and the fly won't swim properly. So again, I've got my little bit of super glue here that I've caught onto my bodkin needle. Just going to plunk that in between the eyes, turn my vise upside down and a little bit of glue on my thread wraps below and there's a, a viva booby for uh, want of a better description How often do you slick your flies, slick your lines and which slick do you use? Uh, I take it you mean the fly lines, Dylan. Um, I, I wash them sort of once a season, really. So at the end of the season, and for me, that's generally October. I, I kind of pack my, my lock style kit away. Uh, I just wash it in soapy water. I mean, I'll tell you what, um, Tim Joyce done an outstanding video on maintaining his fishing kit. And uh, if you've not seen Tim Joyce's channel, and I, I, I would urge you to check it out it's a great wee video just showing how he treats his fly lines and, and looks after the whole lot of it so uh, definitely worth a look so that's the uh, the, the Viva booby um, again so why would I use this over the, the candy floss uh, there's a couple of reasons so you know nowadays as I said, everyone's got the uh, the light coloured ones and I find this works great in clearer water but for darker water, so muddy water and stuff the um, the darker fly just stands out profile wise it's, it stands out much more now I talked about before uh, I started tying this fly I talked about how we pulled the boobies through the surface to induce fish to follow and eventually when the, the um, intermediate line pulled the fly under, the fish would hammer it. So that, that's great. What about when the fish are 10 feet, 15 feet, you know, 20 feet? Doesn't matter. Whatever depth they're at, how, do, how, how, will, the, how will a booby help your fishing? Well, if, you're, uh, if you read the packet of your fly lines, you'll know that each line has a sink rate. So, for example, the DI7 sinks at seven inches per second and what I what I have on my uh, boat seat is a little um, laminated chart which tells me after how many seconds what depth my line will be at and when I'm especially early season so you've got a cold winter fish will be sitting deep and they'll be quite lethargic and and the best way to catch them or find them is to count your line down so what do I mean by that so with a single booby I might often shorten my cast up to six feet even and with a DI7 I'll count it down with my little chart and what I've got is 
on my on my boat seat I've got my my pad here and what's in the pad there's my priest for when I've got to knock him on the head but also I've got a little stopwatch in here and when the match starts I uh, I'll start a process so maybe with a DI7 I'll count it down five seconds initially maybe do that for three or four casts if I get nothing my next three or four casts will be 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Of course, this all depends on the wind. If you're in a boat, you've got to take into account and you're in competition, the speed in which the boat's moving forward because what you can't do in competition is fish behind the boat, honestly. Yeah, I've seen a few boys doing that. It's not good. But um, there was a, a massive incident at um, one of the the big competitions a few years back about people trawling behind the boat but if you're playing by the rules you're counting down and you're in touch with your fly at all times and uh, the stopwatch and your little line chart if you've got the time or um, motivation to make one up you can tell exactly what depth you're fishing your fly now if you're lucky enough to come across the fish and let's say for example you've counted down 15 seconds with your DI7 and you get a fish. More often than not, if you repeat that process, you will continue to get fish. And it's just a matter of process. So once you've sussed out the what the fish want, i.e. do they want it quick, do they want it fast, would they like it mixed up, did the takes come just after you gave your line a long pull and then you stopped? And very often that is the case. It's when that activity ceases and the booby, you can imagine it in the water, it just starts fluttering up through the column and that's very often when fish absolutely smash it. And that's why the hang is so effective early season fishing boobies. They'll just come up and your rod will buckle over and there's, there's not a feeling like it. I can't wait to get back out and, and get some of that sport. So, yeah. Great for finding fish and uh, at any depth. But once you've got the combination, you can continue to catch fish right throughout. Hi Reese, how are you? Eddie, Tim's tutorial is outstanding and it's uh, a good lesson for everybody really on looking after their kit. I mean, fly fishing tackles, it's not the cheapest um, stuff you'll, you'll pay for. You best well look after it. Hi Robert, no bother, I know it's very early over there in uh, Michigan, I hope things are okay. Slightly off topic, have you heard of a fly called a foam-faced blob for fishing when boobies aren't allowed? It would be great if you could do a video on it, if possible. I'll tell you what James, I have heard of a fly, I, I didn't know it was called the foam-faced blob, but Steve Cullen, I don't know if you know about his YouTube channel, but he did a video recently on a very the very pattern you're talking about. So if you wanted to jump onto Steve's channel and have a look at that, he does an excellent video. Um, I think the idea came though, but many, many years ago, there was a, a fly called the Cyclops, uh, and that was to get round the whole, the banning of the boobies. So a lot of fisheries, a lot of still water fisheries have banned the booby. And the reason for this, it's not because it's the most lethal fly that you'll ever fish with and you'll clean fisheries out, although it is very effective. It's because people were not fishing them properly. So punters would turn up at fisheries, I'm going to catch fish on a booby, they'd stick on a fast sinking line, two or three foot of tip it, launch their fly line out into the middle of the lake, put the rod down, go and have a cup of tea and a bit of a blether with our mates and what would happen is fish would come along and absolutely devour the fly so the whole thing's gone right down their throats and uh, if you're operating a catch and release fishery obviously there is just no chance a fish is going back after you've stuck your four steps right down its throat trying to retrieve your super duper fly so a lot of fisheries have banned that now if you're fishing boobies correctly, this almost never happens. I can count on one hand in 30 years how many times I've deep hooked a, a fish. 
and it's generally been because I'm trying to be eating a sandwich or something while fishing, which is never a good thing. Yeah, uh, Graham, you've just said about uh, usually when you fish catch and release, if you're fishing properly, it'll really happen. And what, what do I mean by properly? You're, you're in constant contact with the, with the fly. So if, if you're in constant contact with a single fly, the slightest thing you feel on that, you strike, generally you're hooking the fish in the forceps or in the top lip, and uh, a deep, deep hooking is very, very rare. But as I say, if you've turned up for a blether with your pals and a cupper, and you've thrown out a sunken line with a booby, that's when the problems start happening. And uh, you've got to respect fisheries that don't allow you to fish boobies, and that's fair enough. Anyway, enough blether, shall we tie another fly? Okay, again, I'm putting in a, a Hanak H250 barbless hook into the vise. And I'm going to put on my massive Dalek head and grab my white uni thread. So this is white uni, you can't see it, but it is white uni thread at 6 alt. And I'm going to just catch a little bit of wax onto that. And then I can get a better thread down the shank of the hook. Now, the, the fly I'm going to tie, actually, I haven't tied any yet, but I have got the stuff here. Uh, and the tail I'm going to be using is, again, it's the Comp Candy Lunar White. And I'm going to take from my thumbnail to my knuckle. and trim away my waist just off camera there. Again, I want this about three quarters of the length of the shank. The key to, when you're tying your boobies, make sure you leave a good quarter of an inch near the front of the eye, because that's where it all goes wrong and where people fall over with it. So, let's just get some of them bits away. You don't have to be particularly tidy. I'm going to come in with my thumb and forefinger and just remove a bit of the tail. Now I know that's too long for comp already just looking at it. But the body is uh, going to be some of this stuff if I can find the end. It's green chenille. There it is. Take a little bit of that. And with the chenille what I like to do is just, with my fingernails, try and strip out a little bit of the fibre so that I reveal the core. And then I can catch that in, like so. Again, I'm just going to bulk up where I think I've not got enough bulk to keep a nice even body. And then I can just a few turns. And this is, uh, have you guessed what it is yet? It's a bit old school really, but um, I don't know, it's just it's just so effective. It's, it's one of them flies that you can always expect to get fish on, especially early doors. So I'll just put that to the side and Next, I'm going to come in with a bit more marabou again, fingernail to knuckle, and I'm just going to put a little twist in that, remove the waist. Just like to dampen down the ends. And then come over. Right. OK, 
Okay, once more, in with the thumb and forefinger, remove any waste. So, that's looking good. Hello Huel, how are you? <laughs> A traditional fly, I like that. Okay, <laughs> what is the score with the rugby? Is it, it's Italy versus France, isn't it? Yeah, nobody's interested in that. Okay, I'm going to uh, tie white eyes on this. And again, I'm using the same technique I used for the other boobies. Got that on, and I'm going to just wrap that up. Now, five tons either side generally secures it, and a few tons in front, and come in with a quick finish tool, and finish the fly. Now, I'm going to show you something with this one, um, but I need to explain a bit first. So basically, if you've, if you've been with me thus far, you've managed to put up with me rabbiting on, um, I've just put some super glue in there to finish the fly, but and I would do that with this and then leave it to dry and then after I left it to dry I would show you this next stage. But because we are on video, I don't want you to be hanging around. So I'm going to use some UV resin just to get that finished off. And then a little bit on the bottom. And I'll cure that off. Same with the top. Now, so there's that. That's that. So we, imagine I've super glued it and it's all nice and dry for me now. Let's just see what folks saying. Meant to say, hope you all fly time before the rugby starts. I'm going to be, don't worry mate, I'll not be on here when that rugby starts. egg chasing yeah that's what we're after right so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to add a little hot spot underneath the the thread wraps that i've got here and, and what i'm using for that is um some trout line neon uv hot spot i've got some of the green here and i think you know what i was going to do orange but i think i'll do green So it comes in a little pot. I mean, it could really... Is it the best way of delivering it? I'm not sure. But you get... It does give you a fantastic effect. So I'm just going to come in on the top. And make a right mess of it first time round. And this is UV, so it will stand out. I'll just put this to the side for now try to find my torch I'll cure that off and I, got, I came across this idea uh, just last year I was fishing with a guy called Mike Connett I got invited up to fish with a, a few boys that had travelled down for Scotland one other party couldn't make it and I was lucky enough to be invited along and uh, me and Mike were out on Grafham and it was, it was a rough old day actually and we ended up looking for some uh, some respite in Sanctuary Bay and uh, we were doing okay but it wasn't great and then we started to fish the boobies and, and Mike said, Mike started getting in a few and he said oh try, we'll try one of these and uh, he showed me this little tip and sure enough a lot of my boobies now uh, I've started to tie like this and uh, does it make any difference? I'm not sure. I, I think the profile and the, 
the movement of the booby probably does more damage, but it's the placebo effect, isn't it? You know, you think it's working, so it will work. And then what you get is that that nice hot spot underneath your eyes there. And there's the cat booby. Right, let's see if there's any more questions. I can take that binoculars off again. Jesus. Yeah, it tips my head forward, that does. Foam. Don't get the rugby over here. You don't get the rugby, Chris? Jesus Christ, that's shocking. <laughs> don't do a lot of still water fishing, but picked up some useful info for when I eventually get to fish Toff Newton. Ah, uh, Nigel, the still water's good fun, um, but uh, the, the sort of techniques I'm talking about, uh, generally, you're, you, you're doing that from a boat, to be honest with you. Anyway, I've got beer to be drinking. I've got rugby to be watching. So I'm going to call it a halt at that. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys, and uh, I'm really enjoying doing it. Uh, I hope you're getting something out of it. So, until next time, stay safe.